They went on to become one of the top-selling groups of the 90s, took home four Grammy Awards, and racked up several platinum albums. By the time the 2000s rolled around, their album sales decreased and Mike vanished from the group. This is a story about a health crisis, a devastating divorce, and allegations of betrayal. Here's what really happened to the fourth member of Boyz II Men and the drama which came along with the fame. Don't forget, you can gain access to this audio and one unreleased video per month on the RRG Patreon. Details are in the description box. Let's take a trip back to the late 80s. Nathan Morris was in history class at the Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts. The known troublemaker began singing during class, and when his teacher told him to be quiet, he started singing louder. According to the Des Moines Register, his classmate, Mark Nelson, joined in. They were both kicked out of class, but they hit it off, became best friends, and formed several singing groups over the next few years. They teamed up with fellow classmates Sean Stockman and Wanye Morris to create a group called Unique Attraction. They practiced on street corners, but their favorite place to harmonize was in the boys' restroom at school because it provided the perfect acoustics for their vocals. One day, while singing New Edition's song, Can You Stand the Rain, Mike McCary walked in. He told the Washington Post he started singing with them, and they were so impressed by the bass in his voice. They asked him to join their group, and Mike agreed. Sean told People Magazine he and Nathan were talking on the phone one day and discussed changing their name because they thought the name Unique Attraction sucked. Sean added, It was such a Philadelphia name. If you grew up in Philadelphia, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was cheesy, but it was the vibe back then. New Edition's song entitled Boys to Men started playing on the radio, and Sean thought it would be the perfect name for their group. Nathan wasn't convinced, though, but since they couldn't come up with anything better, they just stuck with it. Boys to Men was officially born. Michael Bivens was going to be hosting a radio showcase in Philly. According to the Los Angeles Times, they didn't care about getting signed. They just wanted someone to hear them sing. So they came up with a plan to secure backstage passes and came face to face with Michael Bivens. In front of the star-studded backstage crowd, which included Will Smith, Keith Sweat, and Kid and Play, they gave an impromptu performance. Once they were done, they received a standing ovation. Michael Bivens had plans to move into music management one day, but he wasn't entirely convinced the boys had what it took. He gave Nathan the phone number to the hotel he was staying at in Los Angeles. He was like, yo, man, we want to talk. And I was like, well, listen, I, I go to LA in two weeks, and here's this number to the hotel. I live in this room, but in actuality, I was getting in the car going back to New York because we was being BBD in Philly, working on the Poison Out. So we left Philly and went back to Secaucus because that's where we were staying. And Nathan told Rolling Stone he blew up his phone every single day. When I got to L.A. in two weeks, and this kid called me, Sean, two weeks that same day every night for three weeks. Why? Wow. I thought it was a little crazy. <laughs> I was like, this is a little too much. So maybe into the two and a half weeks, I was just like, yo, money, can I ask you a question? I, I, I was like, yo, what do you want? And he was like, Mike, would you be our manager? At the same time, their group member, Mark, was offered a solo deal with Capitol Records. He didn't want to leave his friends behind, so he presented the label with the idea of signing Boys to Men as a package deal, but the label turned it down. They only wanted Mark. Eventually, Michael Bivens brought them in for a meeting in New York and agreed to manage them under his Biv Entertainment Company. Unfortunately for Mark, he already had his management through a local company. Mark told You Know I Got Soul website his manager wouldn't release him from his contract so he could join Michael Bivens' management company. With no other choice, Mark dropped out of Boys to Men and signed with Capitol Records as a solo artist. He eventually became a member of the R&B group as yet. He and Nathan are still best friends to this day. As a quartet, Boys to Men signed to Motown Records. Michael Bivens took a hands-on approach by developing their entire style. Wanye told the Chicago Tribune Michael Bivens wanted them to look, quote, different from other black guys. 
So he made them look preppy by dressing them in cardigans, shorts, and bow ties. Michael Bivens named the look Alex Vanderpool, after the character Alfred Vanderpool on his favorite soap opera, All My Children. Nathan also used Alex Vanderpool as his nickname. Mike became known as Bass, Sean was given the name Slim, and Wanye was Squirt. They wrote many of the songs on their upcoming album and teamed up with producer Dallas Austin to begin the recording process. It took them just six weeks to finish the 1991 debut album, Cooley High Harmony. On the album cover, each group member posed with canes. Wanye told the Chicago Tribune Michael Bivens eventually took the canes away from three of them. Wanye added, he allowed Mike to have one to be cool. Their doo-wop meets hip-hop sound landed them at the top of the charts. And thanks to songs like Motown Philly, End of the Road, and It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday, the album reached platinum status. In April 1992, they joined MC Hammer's Too Legit to Quit tour along with Jodeci. During a stop in Chicago, their road manager, Roderick Roundtree, was awakened by someone pounding on his hotel room door. Roderick called out to his assistant, Quadri El Amin, for help so they could escort the three men down to the hotel's security. All five men entered an elevator where a scuffle took place and a weapon was drawn. Quadri suffered a gunshot wound to the knee, which wasn't life-threatening. Roderick, however, was pronounced deceased. Two of the suspects were acquitted of first-degree murder charges because insufficient evidence failed to prove they acted under premeditation. The third suspect was found guilty of second-degree murder and aggravated battery with a firearm. He was sentenced to two 14-year sentences. The group members were so devastated, they took two weeks off to grieve and pay their condolences to Roderick's family before rejoining the tour. As Michael Bivens focused more on his own career, Boys to Men decided to part ways with him. They hired their assistant road manager, Quadri El Amin, and a man named John Dukakis to manage them. Boys to Men released a Christmas album in 1993, and over the course of the next nine months, they worked on their next LP. Nathan told the Chicago Tribune because their first album was so successful, Motown hired big-name producers such as Babyface to work with them and paid for expensive recording sessions. Nathan said they wanted to control everything and write the songs and have these checks come out of the budget. Conflict with the label wasn't the only thing going on. In an interview with Vlad TV, producer Dallas Austin said he was called back in to work with them on their second album. But after experiencing success and fame while out on the road, Dallas said their attitudes had changed and they became major <laughs> They reportedly went into the studio with inflated egos and bragged about their wealth and their Rolexes, and it rubbed Dallas the wrong way. Dallas also said the group was disrespectful to Babyface after the hit songwriter and producer presented them with the song, I'll Make Love To You. According to Dallas, the group reportedly told Babyface the song was horrible and they didn't need his help to make a smash hit. It wasn't until their label exec got on the phone with them and told them to do the track that the group agreed to record the song. Nathan addressed Dallas's allegations in a tweet where he told the Grammy Award-winning producer to stop smoking weed and spreading lies. As for Mike, things were headed down a scary road for him. He told Iyanla Van Zant he started experiencing back spasms while performing, which he attributed to scoliosis. He kept his pain a secret from his bandmates. As time went on, his symptoms began to worsen, but he fought through the pain. The cane, which was once used as a prop on stage, became a necessity for 22-year-old Mike. Their sophomore album, entitled Two, dropped in 1994, and it was even more successful than Cooley High Harmony. The record-setting single, I'll Make Love To You, spent 14 weeks at the number one spot, only to get replaced by their next single, On Bended Knee. Their song, Water Runs Dry, was also a top five hit. The album itself sold 11 million copies. Next, they spent some time collaborating with other artists. Wanye teamed up with his then-girlfriend, Brandy, on the hit song, Broken Hearted. 
and the entire group sang background on songs by artists like Michael Jackson, LL Cool J, and Mariah Carey. They also opened up their own studio called Stone Creek Studio in a suburb right outside Philadelphia. After Motown released an album entitled The Remix Collection in 1995 without the group's consent, it eventually led to the breakdown of their relationship with the label. They finished one more album through Motown, the 1997 critically acclaimed Evolution, which went platinum. After a few record company mergers, Boys to Men's contract was transferred from Motown to Universal. As the 2000s rolled around, they kept making music and continued to rub people in the industry the wrong way. During an Instagram interview with Eddie Levert and his daughter Ryan, Candy Burris was asked to talk about the most difficult artists to work with in the studio. Yeah, I had a bad experience in the studio with Boys to Men. <laughs> yeah. Really, well, yeah. You know, when, you, when you say bad experience, it was bad. They, they, they could sing, couldn't they? No, it wasn't about the singing. It wasn't about the singing at all. Yeah, it was not the singing. What is it? <laughs> was it about the attitude or what? Attitude. Yeah. We, we fell out after that. It was an issue. I just, if, I, I don't think I ever been disrespected like that before in the studio <laughs> in my life. It was crazy, really. Despite the friction, Candy co-wrote the song Good Guy for the group's album, entitled Nathan, Michael, Sean, Wanye. The album went gold, but it was considered a flop in comparison to the platinum albums they had released in the past. The group moved on and signed with Arista Records, and they released Full Circle in 2002. That album failed to leave a prominent mark on the charts as well. Mike was also taking more time off to go to doctor's appointments, and his health condition was causing him to miss rehearsals and shows. At the age of 28, he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, a disease in which the immune system eats away at the protective covering of nerves. He kept his diagnosis a secret from everyone, including his bandmates and his then-wife, Venus. Mike also admitted he fell into a deep depression. Sean told Fox Soul they tried to accommodate Mike's condition by giving him a stool to sit on during performances, but they started to notice he wasn't as ambitious as everyone else. Still, they were loyal to him, and Sean said they still paid Mike a salary even when he stopped answering their phone calls. After a doctor told Mike that aggravating a nerve in his back could potentially leave him paralyzed, he left the group in 2003. When asked by Iyanla to sum up what he took away from his time with Boys to Men, Mike answered, Betrayal, a broken bond. Mike returned to Philadelphia where he and his wife, Venus, opened a soul food restaurant called Majestic Ribs. But soon enough, Mike's marriage was on the rocks. Mike told Iyanla, it was at a point that I wanted to choke her and I knew I had to leave. But RRG can exclusively confirm that it was Venus who filed for divorce in May 2007 after 14 years of marriage. Mike said the dissolution of his marriage also separated him from his three children. During his appearance on Iyanla, he said after his ex-wife found out he was communicating with his children while she was at work, she disconnected the telephones. At the time the episode aired, Mike said he hadn't seen his children in seven years. He added, I've not been a father anymore. I'm just a man with kids. Fast forward to 2012. Boys to Men received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and Mike showed up to the ceremony. That same year, Mike asked if he could return to the group. Sean told the HuffPost they were ready to welcome him back, but they wanted him to sign a contract that would protect the three of them in case he walked out again. During a phone call, Mike voiced his concerns and explained why he wasn't going to sign the contract. Sean said they basically hung up on him and got back to making music. It wasn't until 2016 when Mike officially opened up to the world about his medical condition, but it didn't change his relationship with his former bandmates. Sean, Nathan, and Wanye have continued releasing music as boys to men. 
As recently as 2020, Sean revealed they still weren't in contact with Mike, but his spot in the group is waiting for him as soon as he's ready to give them 100%. Until that happens, Boys to Men will remain a trio. Let us know your thoughts on what happened to Boys to Men. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.